Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Prisoner Press. My name is Brady G. Everything you need to understand how to survive this end time situation that believers in Christ are currently dealing with is over on prisonerpress.com. We are the most reliable and trustworthy information source on the internet when it comes to expressing truth and exposing evil. That's what we've aimed to do for the last five years. Now, three years ago, I posted a YouTube video that helped over 34,000 believers in Christ discern whether they wanted to wear a prayer shawl or a talit and if they wanted to incorporate it into their Christian or Messianic practice, whatever situation they tend to be in spiritually. And the answer to many of these people has been a resounding yes. Yes, there is power in the Talit. Yes, the Spirit of God resides in the treasures that he leaves for his children. And yes, there is a mysterious and absolutely otherworldly supernatural power that he has ordained for his believers within their prayer closets to wield. And to preface this whole video, I want to go to Matthew 5, 6 to 8. I'm sure that I've read it in every other video on the prayer shawl that I've posted. However, this needs to be our foundation for when we dive into ideas that are somewhat controversial in the Christian community. Now, why are they controversial? Well, that would be because much of modern day Christianity has decided to discard their Judeo values that form the foundation of the faith. However, at prisonerpress.com, of course, we understand the significance of Israel. Of course, we understand the significance of Judaism. And we want to incorporate as much of these Judeo values into our Christianity. So not to become Judaizers like in the book of Galatians, but so that we can respect and understand and adore the person and the life that Jesus Christ Yeshua lived for us. Anyway, Matthew 5, 6 to 8. I'm extremely passionate about the prayer shawl, and I believe that it has so much power that will change your life. Matthew 5, 6 to 8, a new international version for simplicity. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others to pray in public so that others see them and believe that they are better than them. If you've ever met someone like this in your church, you know exactly what this verse is talking about. And Jesus, right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, is destroying this notion. Truly, I tell you, back to the text, you have received... They have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room. Close the door. Other trans translations say, go into your closet. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Okay, in Matthew 5, 6 to 8, there's a lot to unpack here. First on the end, before we get to the closet part of the verse, which is obviously the main idea of the prayer shawl and the talit, do not babble like the pagans, for they will not be heard for having many words. Well, we've all been in situations where we've heard someone praying such an elegant prayer that is long, well-structured, almost planned out. However, this is not what God wants. He wants the very, very thoughts in your soul to pour out to him and for you to be speechless because of how in majestic bliss you are by speaking to him, that he knows what you're thinking and what you're feeling, but you can't put it into words because you're being so raw and honest to him. That's what he wants unconditional love and incredible awe in the face of your Lord. Anyway, back into the room. God wants you to go into a room, pray by yourself, close the door. Now, first of all, let's remember who wrote this book, the book of Matthew. 
we know that it was an extremely Jewish written book. Why? Well, because it begins the New Testament. So it keeps in mind that those transitioning from the Old Testament to the New Testament are typically extremely Jewish in nature. And the author was was aware of the desired audience's background and uh, intentionally writing to them. So the author gave consideration to Jewish sentence structure, idioms, imagery, and in this verse, a common Hebrew idiom in antiquity was to consider a head covering or when one covers their head to be going into their own space or room. Because back in these times, affording your own room or space was extremely uncommon. You were bunked with other people. There were many people around. You didn't have the privacy to go into a room by yourself at most times. But when the ancient Hebrews would cover their head with a head covering, that was considered going into their own room. And all this is to say that this video is about why I personally wear a prayer shawl, why I incorporate it into my Christian practice, and why I believe that you could unveil a lot of power from Jesus Christ if you do too. But for me, this is my talit here, by the way. I meant to show this earlier, but this is a homemade talit. I had my grandmother make it, who she does a lot of work with wool. Of course, it's made out of one type of material, except there's uh, knitted lines and purled lines. Anyway, the tassels or the tzitzits are hand spun by me to, um, to uh, equal out the number that God ordained for it to remember the 613 commandments in the Torah. Anyway, uh, by the way, if you do want a prayer shawl, if you've seen the other videos that I made on the prayer shawl and you've been spoken to, you've decided that you're going to purchase one, we are working with a very special Jewish company to provide them for you. If you just go to the link in the description on prisonerpress.com, uh, we have a link to an excellent prayer shawl for an excellent, excellent price that will really change your prayer life trust me once i get into my testimony of me with the prayer shawl you'll hear all about it but let me just put that out there we are selling them we do receive a small commission when you purchase it on amazon however it helps us fight the good fight and destroy those who are standing in the face of freedom and spitting on your children and trying to turn your children into uh the new socialist armies of the new world order that are unfolding right in front of our very eyes okay why do i personally wear the tally I gotta stop babbling on like the pagans. I'm just gonna get a drink here. Uh, it's exhausting when you are in the business of exposing evil. However, it's so important to take a watchman anointing and to steward it well to protect God's people. Because as we transition into the end times, as we transition into the events that unfold in the book of Revelations, we need to be extremely conscious of discerning good from evil because many will be deceived. And we can't let that happen as the body of Christ. Why I wear a talit? Well, the one and the main most simple reason is that it keeps me focused. Uh, it reminds me of my favorite worship song that I often sing in my private worship and that is uh, Hiding Place by Citizens and Saints I can't play it on here obviously for copyright infringement they'll do anything to shut us down trust me but the chorus goes my God refuge and strength you are my joy and my hiding place God of all renown, you are my joy and my hiding place. You are my joy and my hiding place. And when you pray, when you cover your head and go into your room and pray like so, your distractions are automatically blocked out. My wife walking by over there will not distract me. 
what's happening outside the window will not distract me. It's me and God as I'm in my hiding place speaking to him. It's a one-on-one personal uh, relationship for the time while I'm in prayer. He is truly my joy and my hiding place. Bless his holy name. Another reason that I personally use a talit or a prayer shawl is that we are in spiritual warfare. And like we pray in Psalm 91, we need to hide under his wings. And also it's interesting to note that in Psalm 91, the word wings is uh, the Hebrew word kanaf, which if you want to look it up, Strong's number 3671, kanaf also means corners. Like the four-cornered garment that God commanded the ancient Jews to wear. Now I know he didn't command modern Christians to wear. We'll get to that later. Now more than ever, while the ministry is under attack, of course, Prisoner Press, you know, has been shut down multiple times. Our website has been shut down. Videos on YouTube have been banned. They've been trying to do everything they can to silence us. Because we're telling the truth. And we won't stand for that. We'll never bow down to the globalists who try to uh, turn us into socialist slaves, put us in these enslavement camps, kill us with 5G, kill us with coronavirus. Whatever they're trying to do to us as God's children, we will not bow down to them. We will stand up with the power of our maker behind us and destroy Satan for doing these things. It won't, won't happen to me and my family while we have the power of God within us. But... Uh, On the side note, when I wear my prayer shawl and I commune with God, I am covered under his wings, under his talit or prayer shawl, pleading for his protection. And I feel it. And he's done so well to protect me so far and to provide for me and my family. Now, another reason why I personally wear a talit Excuse me. Is that before I was wearing a talit, my prayer life was mundane or mediocre. I was going through the motions, praying, trying to pray unceasingly, as the Bible commands. But you know how it can be sometimes when you're praying and you're not really praying. Like you're just sorting out your emotions and talking, but you're not really feeling like you're communicating specifically with the Father or Yahweh. But once I started using the Talit, my prayer life changed. I felt more in his presence when I prayed. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit while I had the Talit on. I spoke in tongues for the first time. And it just changed my prayer life and lit me on fire. Bless the Lord. I thank him so much for that because it's been such an incredible journey and it's been such an incredible life. And I just, it's hard for me to talk about it without getting emotional, but the prayer shawl has really changed my prayer life. and I really want it to change yours too. I know a lot of you are skeptical. I've got hundreds of comments on my videos saying that, um, it's a form of Judaizing or pharisaical activity. It's anti-biblical, but it's not. It's so special. And I want you to be involved in it. I want you to have some of this for yourself, which is why I'm trying to help you get one. I'm trying to point you in the right direction of a trustworthy source that uses kosher materials and wines that it's exactly how God commanded it to be wound and I just want you to have a piece in this amazing spiritual journey that I've been on, and I want my viewers to be on it too. And the last and final reason why I wear a talit or a prayer shawl is simply because the Torah tells me to. Now I understand we're not under the Old Testament law. I understand that it's not a salvation issue if we break Torah. I understand that the Hebrew Roots movement is somewhat dangerous in its very essence, in that it does promote Judaizing, and we don't want to do that. Woe to you who has bewitched you, as Paul said in the book of Galatians. 
However, it doesn't mean that all of the commandments in the Torah are irrelevant. Such a massive commandment that's referenced so many times in the Old Testament into the New Testament, in the very beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the prayer shawl is such a huge part of the Bible that to me it just seems like if God commanded his believers to do it, if Jesus wore one of these in his life, are we not trying to be more like Jesus? Now, I know that Jesus practiced a bunch of Jewish things that are irrelevant to us today as we are under the new covenant. However, this is such an amazing, powerful piece of spiritual um, spiritual tools. He's really given us power through this. And I believe that if you give it a chance, you will be renewed. You will have a more powerful prayer life and you will be more in tune with the father and i just want you to give it a try there's a link in the description on prisonerpress.com that will take you to our friends over at judaica they are a jewish company that creates these prayer shawls they are authentic they are exactly like the one jesus wore we want you to give it a chance we will receive a small commission from each purchase it helps us for web hosting it helps us for um keeping this ministry going we need money uh, to live my wife and i are doing everything we can to keep this ministry afloat on our own incomes however we do need help if we're going to keep prisonerpress.com up if we're going to keep reaching out to the lost and promoting the become saved portion of the prisoner press channel know that if you purchase a prayer shawl from our friends over at judaica via our link on our website at prisonerpress.com you will personally be helping the word of God reach the lost. You will personally be standing up to the globalists and spitting in the face of evil and saying, my God will prevail. And we believe that this is exactly what the next phase and the next step is. We know we've already won via the book of Revelation. However, we need to just get to the end. And together we will do that. My name is Brady G. This is the Prisoner Press. Prisonerpress.com. Link in the description to purchase a prayer shawl for yourself. And we'll be right back in the next transmission.